this work? All right. She was just 23. She had her whole life in front of her. A life filled with hopes and dreams for a better tomorrow. A life that did not come easy, yet she found time to enjoy her freedom. A life that was not selfish, but dedicated to improving the prospect of her entire family. A life where education was the cornerstone for success, secured by her family who sold their land so she could study and excel as she did. A life like millions of women whose voices aren't heard, but are quiet everyday heroes. A life that was brutally and barbarically interrupted on a cold December night and which she bravely fought for 13 days before passing away right here in Singapore. At first, the world was stunned into silence, shocked and struggling to imagine how something like this could happen. But shock gave way to anger and mobilized people around the world. People like us who were furious with the so-called leaders who stood in the way of rather than with their people. People like us who were conflicted, filled with pride for the liberal ideals and constitutional equality for men and women given to us by our founding fathers. And yet, plagued with shame that despite this, we have not been able to prevent growing crimes against women, narrow a widening gender gap, improve one of the lowest literacy rates for the world for women, and change a pathetic participation rate of women in our grassroots political process. People like us who are deeply frustrated with the ineffective, malfunctioning institutions that lack rigor and discipline and allow heinous crimes like this to go unpunished. People like us who still are angry but have decided that this is no longer acceptable. But anger is not enough. Anger is alone a bright but short-lived flame. There is no doubt that our collective outrage has been a wake-up call for institutions who need to do more, a lot more. But institutional reform is not the only answer. We must look deeper within ourselves and address our collective consciousness. It is here that we must cultivate the embers of an eternal flame of action. We need discussion, we need dialogue, we need introspection, and we need to constantly ask ourselves the hard questions about violence against women and where it comes from. Is it a lack of respect or education or even something more deep-rooted? Most of all, we need to resolve to change that. As employers, we need to create environments that foster and nurture women to be successful, flexible environments where women can participate and are encouraged to, not penalized. As parents, we need to make sure that our daughters and our sons have equal opportunity for education and achieving economical, social, and political independence. And for all of our children to demand that of their peers and the communities that they live in, most importantly, as individuals, we need to treat people equally and respect them for the smallest of daily interactions to the grandest of decisions of our lives. Only then will gender equality be seen as the fundamental human right that it is, rather than one that we aspire to achieve. Over 200 years ago, it took one man to stand up to an abominable act that of Sati, where wives were being set ablaze alive on the deceased husband's funeral pyre. Raja Ram Mohan Roy, some call him the father of modern India, saw something he found unacceptable, and he made it his life's pur purpose to eradicate it. He used political, social, and religious influence to change that 
and he did. It took one man a lifetime to do this. But for a second, imagine the possibility. If just those of us gathered here from across the world at this park, on this day, in this today's socially aware and connected world, take a similar vow to stop violence against women. If we do, surely we can achieve the great things that Raja Ram Mohan Roy did. Surely we can create a world envisaged by another reformist, freedom fighter, and Nobel laureate, Rabindranath Tagore, who in his poem, India's Prayer, wrote, and I quote, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into an ever-widening and thought and action. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Let us all make it our lives work to deliver that freedom. Thank you.